Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we're tasting a smash beer. We want to get to know lotus hops and what kind of aromas and flavors mm -hmm. it brings to beer. So I brewed a smash beer using Turo Rao Pale Malt. See? I learned from you. And uh, it's a one gallon batch, so only two pounds of malt is necessary, along with one packet of uh, lotus hops, one ounce. Um, but I split them into grams, and we just say 28 grams. And so we, we mash for a, a, an hour, we boil for an hour, we add uh, our first hop additions with 15 minutes to go in the boil, just seven grams, and then it flame out uh, another 14 grams of lotus hops. And then at day three of fermentation, we add the remaining seven grams of hops for dry hopping. Wow. And then we ferment for 10 total days. I throw it in the old uh, U keg. I uh, carved it up in there, learned a little bit more about this particular system. I don't think we have the same oxidation issues that we had with the first batch. Yeah, no, Doesn't, it's beautiful yellow, straw won't be, yellow. People won't be saying it's, you know, dishwater mm. or what have you. I don't think the other one was that badly oxidized. I've done a lot worse. It's like, <laughs> don't uh, tempt me, sir. I will oxidize a beer. But this is um, good, and I think it's a, uh, it's a worthy um, platform to figure out what this hop is all about. So, Lotus Hops. As uh, I've talked about it, um, I'm going to let Mike sip and, and think and... Tell us what he's what he's uh, perceiving. So this one, I'm actually pretty from the for the aroma, the aroma. Yeah, that's a tough one, huh? I'm pretty stumped. the The closest I can come up with it, and it's taken me right up until it was my turn to say something. <laughs> but there's, it's like a little bit of um. There's like a a geranium and a hint of like a vanilla in there. It's mostly geranium, but it's it's so weird. That's the only words I can put to it. The aroma is so strange. But when I tasted it, um, when I tasted it, the predominant taste I get out of it, it's almost more of a mouthfeel is too strong a word, but the, the flavor presentation is the, you know Pez candy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All Pez candy, regardless of the flavor you get, mm. has a flavor. Mm. Like Pez has a flavor, and then there's strawberry, watermelon, lemon, whatever on top of it. I get that in here. Like whatever the whatever the actual brick, candy. bricking yeah. compound is that makes <laughs> Pez, that's sort of what I get in a very pleasant way. Mm. I mean, I actually kind of dig it, uh, but I can't really say. I don't know if I can really put a distinct fruit name or a flower name or something on it. It's so, it's uniquely interesting. Yeah, yeah I agree. I don't think it really stands out or it compares to any of the other hops we've been, we've analyzed in this format. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I am picking up that uh, uh, sugar. It's not, I don't want. It's it's more of the consistency. It's it's sort of that. Um, it's almost like there's a tannic quality. A yeah. drying on my palate. It's swallows yeah. when I get like this weird, you know, mm. it's almost like a cotton candy-like <laughs> thing going on. But it's not It's not like that candy. sweet, though. No, it's, it's like, not, it's yeah. whatever the flavor is minus the sweetness. Yep. Um, it's good. The beer itself is like super light. It's crisp. It's great. Yeah. And uh, this, this very difficult to describe hop presence uh, works really well. I, I'm stumped by what I would call it. Well, I'll, let's talk about what's on the packet, and okay. then um, this is from Hop Steiner. Yep. The Alpha, they gave me a range, <laughs> 13 to 17 percent Alpha. Okay. Oil is uh, 1.5 to 2.5. Not much. Uh, not exact numbers. Okay. I think this. I think when I, you know, when I'm looking at this uh, website, the actually the webs, uh, the Hop Steiner web page. Uh, it had last year as the uh, the date on it, but the descriptors on the packet are orange, vanilla, berries, and tropical fruits. And vanilla. Yes, you got that. Woo! Yeah, yeah I I had that pre like I got that presence, but then again, I had the packet right in front of me. You know, from a sensory perception standpoint, drinking a yellow beer like this, your brain does not want to go to vanilla. No. Right. So it's it's hard to mentally get there, but it's there. It is there. 
Um, cool. Yep. So then uh, the Hopsteiner webpage has a little bit more information. Uh, offers exceptional aromatic characteristics. Yeah. Boasting waves of orange and vanilla, mm -hmm. followed mm -hmm. by notes of candied mm -hmm. grape. Yeah. And tropical fruit aromas. Not getting a lot of tropical fruit. No, no. But the candied grape, I can imagine. Have you had any of these new grapes out there that people are trying? Cotton candy grapes? No. That's what this is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely go there with this. Hmm. I mean, not it's not one for one perfect, but cotton candy grapes. Yeah, that's, that's definitely it. Um, yeah, super unique. Uh, this would... Uh, be crusher with like sabro right that coconut mm. lime leaf thing in this together yeah. um maybe a little vic secret in there what was it was it no nelson right that's yes, what I'm, nelson, I, I don't nelson. i always think of vic secret when you do nelson but sabro and this together alone would probably be a pretty interesting combination right um, but this is super cool um but yeah, I mean, those descriptors work, but there's more. It's very, it's complicated. It's very, com you know, not, but it's not complex. I mean, it, it is, I'm getting really one strong note that I, it's nondescript. I just can't put a, my finger on it. Yes, yeah, strong, but not uh, outrageous or totally yeah. different. It is definitely its own thing. And I think unique is a good one. I, th I think we had the same reaction to the Nelson yeah. smash. Yeah. When we said, I think, yeah, I get a little citrus peel on the yeah, back bite. end, yeah. a little bit of that bite there, but, um, cool. You know, if you really wanted to add something, uh, this would probably be a really good accenting flavor in another blended in with other hops, right? Something that would just give it like an edge that's like, I don't really know what this is, right? Just, it would probably really amplify some other flavors, mm. right? Um, I'm getting more orange now. Yeah, yeah, as it warms a little bit. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and it's funny too, once you introduce the words, then you start finding yeah, those things. Yeah, finding those things. But, yeah, super cool, well brewed, really nice. Nice. All right, well that is our experience with Lotus Hop. This is one of those hop varieties that I believe was on maybe Brew Your Own Magazine's hops to, new hops to try. I bought a whole bunch of those based on that yeah. list. A lot of French hops, which I believe uh, people have said on our comments, hey, yes. you guys should try to brew with French hops. And uh, we're, we've taken, without really seeing that, you followed yep. up. Uh, it's sort of like I had the same thought as you as you were saying, hey, check out these new French hops that are out there. So more to come, more to come from uh, new, new, new hops. I'm guessing ones that really were released within the last couple of years and uh, supposedly have all kinds of great berry fruit, fruit flavors. Uh, the other there's no berries no. in here either. No. Yeah. No. I don't know about that as a descriptor, but Stay tuned, more Smash Beers on the way, as you know, we like to do here on the Brew Dudes YouTube channel. So, uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel, because like I said, there's more of these coming, but all kinds of home brewing videos every single week. And we'll even do a live stream, maybe, every once in a while. People like that. I liked it. Yeah, we had fun. <laughs> we, we walked home laughing and stuff. Yeah. So, for John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, brew on. Cheers.